So I feel a little bad because I myself have been doing all the baby making and that's something I wanted to share with the community. Baby making. My hero baby making. We're gonna have anime YouTubers make my hero babies too. Uh, let, let's see what they got. Let's kick things off with a YouTuber that's great with analysis and laughs, the pedantic romantic. It's high time My Hero Academia's premier prep goth pairing got hooked up on this show. Momo's creation is one of the most powerful quirks around. There's a reason she was able to get into UA through official recommendations. With the ability to use fat cells to create any non-living thing she can imagine, it seems like any child of hers would likely be a force to be reckoned with. When paired with Jito, whose earphone jack quirk is less outright powerful but has a lot of tactical utility, the possibilities are definitely intriguing. However, even though they do make a great couple, I don't envision them making a great quirk. Let me introduce you to the quirk I call Jack Squat. If their baby was unfortunate enough to end up with this, they'd be able to create things just like Mama Momo, but those creations would spring from their earphone cables, and as such, they'd only be able to create things that are compatible with those cables, i.e. things that have an earphone jack. Sorry dear, no iPhones for you. Now, while this quirk might help qualify its wielder for Best Buy Employee of the Month, it probably won't be qualifying them for a pro hero license. Or, let's be real here, even a spot at a pro hero school. But let's take a lesson from Deku and believe in the potential of anyone to be a hero if they truly desire it. Jack Squat is a quirk that might just be well suited for a support program student. Having all sorts of technology at their fingertips from birth would mean that this baby could grow up to be quite the tinkerer. And being able to produce all that stuff instantly while in the workshop would be a real help, allowing them to try out bits of inspiration they have on the spot instead of having to run down to the electronics store for supplies. Take Momo and Jiro's sweet child here as an example of how, even when we might feel useless, we all have something to offer to the world. And next we're gonna go to the basement and ask Mother's Basement. I'm sorry. Thank you for accepting to do this. Hey there, getting the robot fans. I'm Jeff Thu, professional. Are we allowed to swear on here? Uh, Dirtbag uh, from the YouTube channel Mother's Basement, and I'm here to talk about my original Muppet baby, Do Not Steal. Ragdoll is a member of the feline themed search and rescue hero team, the Wild Wild Pussycats, whose quirk, Search, does half of their job single handedly. Search allows Ragdoll to keep track of the position, status, and weak points of 100 people simultaneously. Unfortunately, we don't get a lot of chances to see the ability in action before All For One steals it away. But there's a reason the villain's leader went out of his way to kidnap her and claim her power for his own. Search has incredible untapped potential. When paired with any offensive quirk, the information that it provides becomes a powerful weapon. And no quirk is better suited to take advantage of that information than that of UA instructor and professional Clint Eastwood impersonator Snipe, whose homing ability allows him to precisely control the trajectory of any bullet he fires. A useful quirk on its own, but I I'm sure I don't have to explain how it could be enhanced with the power to track even a handful of targets without worrying about range or line of sight. The combination of Snipe and Ragdoll's powers would make for one of the deadliest and hardest to defend against quirks in existence. As such, I think it's only fitting to call this quirk Search and Destroy. With Search and Destroy, this baby could take command of a whole squad of heroes at once, overseeing the infiltration of a villain compound or tracking operations across a vast area while providing near instantaneous fire support to any hero who needs it. One well-placed bullet can make all the difference in a quirk battle, and nothing can place a bullet quite as effectively as this quirk combination. In a hostage scenario, she could simultaneously incapacitate every villain in the building while leaving all of the hostages totally unharmed. But that's assuming Snipe and Ragdoll's baby would walk the path of justice. And with two heroic parents, that would be expected of her, but as incredible as it would be in the hands of a pro hero, Search and Destroy offers up even more lucrative opportunities for a villain. Imagine an assassin who can track her target around the world after laying eyes on him just once. A sniper with no concern for vantage points whose getaway is done before the bullet even hits. The second she decides to kill you, you're already dead. The criminal underbelly of My Hero Academia's world would pay top dollar for a contract killer that reliable and efficient. And it would take a heroic level of restraint to turn that kind of money down. But good or evil, two things about this baby are certain. First, her quirk will make her a force to be reckoned with, and second, the combination of a cowboy hat and cat ears is gonna look downright adorable. 
Is it Annie Tuber or is it Anna Tuber? I think both are acceptable. Uh, on to our next Anna Tuber or Annie Tuber. Tuber. Our next Annie Tuber has been in the game for a long time and he always brings thoughtful commentary to his reviews. Yep, it's Glass Reflection. Here's a baby that's long overdue. Her parents are two of the most popular and most powerful members of Class 1A, Bakugo and Tsuyu. Bakugo's explosive quirk is the result of a nitroglycerin-like substance that he sweats from his palms. Tsuyu's quirk, Frog, is the result of, well, a mutation that makes her into a human-frog hybrid. Both Bakugo and Tsuyu are good at leveraging their quirk strengths in order to turn the tide on enemies, and call me crazy, but I think that Tsuyu's level-headedness would mesh really well with Bakugo's fiery personality. Not to mention the fact that Bakugo and Tsuyu are both very loyal, very loving friends. So, we know that the baby would be in good hands, but what would their baby's quirk be? Well, I wanted to start where Bakugo and Tsuyu's quirks overlap. Bakugo sweats flammable fluid, and Froppy secretes a smelly substance as a form of camouflage. Sure, we haven't seen that particular aspect of her quirk take center stage just yet, but follow me down this road a little further. Like both of her parents, this baby's sweat would be an important aspect of her quirk, but instead of sweating something flammable, she sweats, and stay with me for this, Frog eggs. Exploding frog eggs. She'd be a lot like Irika from another Studio Bones property, Soul Eater. I think her frog egg sweat would probably follow the whole froggy life cycle, repeatedly growing into tadpoles and then fully grown frogs, and yeah, they'd all explode. Now look, I know none of this makes sense, but allow me to point you towards some science to justify this baby's existence. In nature, frog eggs grow and develop independently of their parents as long as they're in moisture. So unless this baby wiped her sweat away, or was wearing some sort of fabric that would absorb her sweat, the frog eggs would continue to mature as long as they were in contact with her sweat or another source of moisture. Get it? Now you should be fully on board with this whole egg sweat exploding frog things, right? Good. Now, hand-to-hand -hand combat might be a little hard for this baby, but she could still lob ticking tadpole time bombs at our enemies. Is there anything worse than getting a face full of tadpoles only to have them explode? <laughs> I thought not. Even better, imagine having this baby on your covert ops team. She could do a few squats, work up a sweat, and then drop frog eggs into puddles on enemy territory. Fast forward one frog life cycle and you've got a massive explosive toad on your hands. Pretty awesome, right? Now, of course, is a good time to talk about the possible downsides of this quirk. There is no perfect quirk, and this is, of course, no exception. These frogs have minds of their own. They're still biological, of course. So even though she could plant a frog, she could not guarantee that it would stay in enemy territory. But hey, maybe Mei Hatsume could make her some kind of support item that would translate her words into ribbits so that she could communicate with her frog spawn. Another downside would be the whole, you know, sweating frog eggs thing. Suffice it to say that this baby would be bad in gym class, but great on the battlefield. All in all, this baby definitely took a much weirder turn than what I was expecting, but maybe that just means that she'd fit right in at UA, alongside some of Horikoshi's freakier creations. Well, y'all really took that one to the next level. Wasn't expecting that. Let's see the next, next one. This next YouTuber always tells it like it is. Let's check in with Sloane, the female otaku. I'm going to make a baby with the powers of two of the best girls in the game, Class 1A's Mina Shido and Class 1B's Ibarra Shiozaki. Shiozaki has one of the most versatile and powerful quirks in My Hero Academia, as evidenced by her performance in the sports tournament. Mina also is a formidable fighter with a versatile and destructive quirk. With two unique quirks in play, we're sure to get an interesting baby. I'll call her quirk Yarrow. Move out of the way, Poison Ivy, because there is nothing seductive about getting sores from a deadly plant. What? You thought she was going to be some sort of plant princess? This baby gets her grit from her mamas. Like Shiozaki, she's able to control her leafy locks. And like Mina, well, she's full of poison. She takes after the Yarrow plant, which can cause severe allergic reactions in some people. Because of her strong poison genes, I think it's fair to assume that this baby sap is particularly noxious. She has two Yarrow flowers growing from her head, which can emit a toxic vapor. In combat, this baby could delibitate tons of enemies with her poisonous spray. And after the poison has faded, her foes will still have to deal with the sores her poison leaves behind. 
not fun. However, because this baby has such cheerful, spiritual parents, I think she'd avoid using her powers except under extreme circumstances. But on the flip side, this baby's quirk is just as versatile as her mom's. Yarrow can also be used to heal. In smaller doses, Yarrow is an anti-inflammatory and an antiseptic. It's also a fantastic wound healing agent because it stimulates tissue growth, meaning this baby could definitely help wounded comrades. So if she doesn't want to, you know, mow down an entire unit with her toxic death spray, she'd come hang back on the sidelines with Recovery Girl, treating her teammates' wounds. The great thing about this baby's quirk is she can tailor to fit her personality and the situation she's in. My Hero Academia has taught us that any quirk can be powerful if the user knows how to wield it. And this baby has plenty of options. This right here is getting the robot, Kurt Ritchie, but, but I'm gonna have a uh, regular Kurt Ritchie uh, take the reins here. We're two completely different people. That sounds wrong, but I guarantee you that is the case. Have you ever felt instant regret? Well, you're about to for clicking this video, and I'm about to for talking. Please don't cut my part. Uh, Minetta X Midnight. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is this an awful ship? Uh, yes. Is this illegal both in law and morality? Absolutely. But did you not want to see debatably the two most perverted characters in the show make a kid? Probably also a yes, but I want to do it anyways because I'm not technically hosting right now. And I haven't gotten the chance to use half of the ball jokes that I usually come up with whenever we talk about Mineta. Anyways, this is a simple yet weird combo and I feel that's a way of doing things that these two characters can get behind. Probably also R. Kelly. Yeah, this is bad. I'm just gonna start now. So let's look at what we got. First, Mineta, who much like a Chuck E. Cheese, is full of balls that are suspiciously sticky. Much unlike a Chuck E. Cheese, he can pull said balls out of his head, sometimes to the point of uh, bleeding. Then we've got Midnight, the self-proclaimed not safe for work hero who, if you think about it, has the most safe for work power. Like, revealing skin equals instant sleep. I've got a lot to say about that, but let's focus on their morally questionable child. So if we were to combine their quirks, I'm pretty sure we'd come up with a more effective, however equally pervy hero, uh, Sleep Bomb. Essentially, this baby would have long hair like Midnight, but it's full of the sticky Mineta-esque Chuck E. Cheese balls. But the catch is that these balls double as, I've uninspiredly named, uh, Sleep Bombs. Take one out, throw it, and boom, you've got an instant snooze. It would give a lot of range to the hero that their mama wouldn't have, and would negate the need for needing so many their head would, you know, start to bleed. Giving them the potential to set traps, play long distance, and wear a suit that doesn't literally have to be torn apart to work. So, there you go, Mineta. I hope you're happy, and I hope I'm not going to jail. And that's it for collab babies. By now, we've got so many babies, we should just open our own daycare center. Like, wow, look at all these babies. It has been amazing working with all these anime YouTubers and naturally their links and channels will be in the description below. So go check that out if you'd be so inclined. I'm Kurt with Gin the Robot, made in NYC because we can't move to Japan. I'm like a nerd, so it looks weird.